I remember listening to pastor over and over again, preaching and preaching and preaching, and we were getting it about this much. And we would hear about grace and grace and grace when we go back into legalism. We needed to hear it and it was saturating our hearts and our minds. We need to preach it all the time because we're so used to performing and having rules and regulations in the time we were kids. We're, we're, you understand that? Nothing's wrong with having rules. Nothing's wrong with having the policies in a company that you adhere to, a school, a church. Policies are good. If you don't have policies, everyone's going to do what they want to do. But what my point is, the policy and the rules must be communicated in love. So that it reflects the reason for the policy is the heart of God. Are you listening to me? Because can I say something? Every one of us is in the same camp. Undeserving. Unqualified. And unconditionally loved by God. And who is to put a set of rules and say, Brother, sister, here are my rules of your spiritual conduct. And only when you meet those rules, then I will conditionally accept you. When God gives me no to the list and tells me I'm accepted by you, by Him unconditionally because of His Son. Are you following what I'm saying? That everything, as we sit tonight at the table of God, recognize just what God has done for us. It's amazing. For in the fullness of time, God sent His Son, born of a woman, Mary born under the law, that he might save those who were under the law, that we might receive adoption as children, that we may be justified by faith. And he gave us the Holy Spirit in our hearts, by which we cry, Abba, Father, the Holy Spirit's been given in our hearts. Now we're no longer servants, but we are sons. That's Galatians 3 and 4, all involved in 2 Samuel 9. That's who we are. And think of what God has done for us. There's now no condemnation as we sit at the table. In Romans 8 1. We've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's Son, Colossians 1 13. We've been forgiven all our sins according to the riches of His grace in Ephesians 1 7. We, we, we have now become, uh, we have become free from the law in Romans 7 6. We've become members of God's kingdom in Colossians 1.13. We've been, we've been adopted into His family in Galatians 3.14 and 4.4. We've become members of His body. We, we, we are now, uh, we have access to God in Ephesians 2.13. We now become priests of God and royal priests in 1 Peter 2.9. Uh, we, we are members of the body of Christ in 1 Corinthians 12.13. And we, we have been given an inheritance in heaven forever and ever in 1 Peter 1, 4. Inheritance is undefiled. And we're spiritually kings and priests in Revelation 1, 7. And we are the vine in John 15. And we are the building of the stone in 1 Peter 2, 5. And we are the bride in Ephesians chapter 5. And we are, we are members of his, of his temple. And the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us in Ephesians 2, 19. And we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. And we're going to live forever and ever and ever. And we sit at a table and we say, thank you, God. I'm going to sit forever with my brothers and sisters. I'm going to sit with Peter and Paul and John Newton. And I'm going to sit with Schaefer. And I'm going to sit with every missionary that ever lived. And we're going to sit together. And there's not going to be this big comparison. Of course, there'll be ranks in heaven. And there'll be rewards in heaven. And we'll reign forever in heaven. But the greatest thing about all is when we sit forever in heaven, we'll be saying, God, thank you. Because all that I am is because of you. 